Hi friends, hope you are doing well and welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Ganguly. So today I'm going to address the issue that there is a huge paucity in terms of postdocs and this is a situation particularly in the US and some top journals such as Nature have given information about this. They mentioned many people, they have got grants and they have not been able to obtain postdocs to do the work. So what could be the reason behind this and is there an exodus of postdocs as far as the US is concerned. So let's look at some of these aspects. So before I try to talk about this, let's look at the basic aspect which makes a postdoc's life in US somewhat difficult and that is the salary. So if I look at the current salary and let's look at the predictions given by the NIH, the National Institute of Health. So for a zero year experience postdoc, the salary is about 54,000 US dollar. For a seven plus year experience postdoc, the salary goes to about 65,000 US dollar per year. So you can say that the salary of 54 to 65,000 dollars per year would be a typical estimate of a postdoc salary in the US for many of the health science type of disciplines. Now let us look at the National Research Council postdocs. So here I get a typical mean value of 74,000 US dollars and these postdocs may be more biased toward the engineering side of the spectrum. So essentially we can then say that these kind of numbers like 54,000, 65,000, 75,000 are representative of postdoc salary. But what happens is that the US median postdoc is $47,500. So the median as you know is a better measure of any kind of income than the mean because the median is not so much prone to any outliers in the data. So it essentially tends to smooth out your numbers to some extent. Now the actual number in terms of postdoc salary in the US is 16,000 to 150,000 US dollars per year. So 16,000 seems a very small number but unfortunately there are some cases where these kind of salaries may be given maybe to people who are coming on certain special visas or maybe people who are working part time and so on. So remember the requirement in the US is that people should be paid the minimum wage. And if they are paid the minimum wage or more than the minimum wage, there is no further requirement in terms of how much your salary should be. So in many cases, it's important to keep your mind that you do not accept a salary which is so low that you are not able to live on it. Maybe you have to supplement this salary by your own money or by income of your spouse or family or somebody like that. So let's look at what could be the cause of this postdoc. shortage. So I would say there are several things. The number one thing is that the salary of the postdocs has not gone up as the prices have gone up. So when I was doing postdoc in 1994 to 1997 time frame, the salary of postdoc was typically 35,000 to 45,000 US dollars. It was not a great salary but it was sufficient to make ends meet. But I would say today the prices of things such as rent in USA is much more than what used to be in the 1990s. So today if we see the situation around the United States, rental for typical one bedroom to three bedroom would be from two thousand dollars to four to five thousand dollars per month in most cities. And if you are talking of cities along the two coasts, so if you are talking of cities such as Boston or New York or Washington DC suburbs and so on or we are talking of San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, the rents in these places are very high. And one of the problems in the US is that all the top universities where you would essentially like to do a postdoc are clustered around these places. And these are not just the universities but in fact many of the national labs also. Though the national labs have less clustering, there are many national labs which are spread out throughout the US. So that's something to keep in mind when you are applying for postdoc that if you get a postdoc at $50,000 in Boston or New York or San Francisco or San Diego or Seattle, 
it's going to be very difficult to live and you would essentially have to live the life of a graduate student in terms of you may have to share and rent an apartment so essentially when we were graduate students three or four of us would rent a three bedroom apartment or a two bedroom apartment and we would have to share that to make ends meet with our stipend so unfortunately the postdoc situation has almost become like that and i would say it's very difficult to live on this salary with the family if you are a single person it should be possible now beside the increase in housing cost and the rental income in us you also always have to keep in mind the cost of health insurance the fact that in many parts of the country you need a car to move yourself from point a to point b the public transport system may not be well developed even if the public transport system is well developed there are parts of the cities and towns where it's probably dangerous to use public transport and it is also not very efficient you may have to wait a very long time for the next bus to come and so on so these are some issues which actually plague the public transport system making you buy a car and with a car comes a lot of expenses in terms of insuring the car in terms of maintenance of the car in terms of the cost of gas and so on and also if you buy a used car the problem is that used cars tend to be less reliable also the prices of used cars have skyrocketed in recent years and if you buy a car which is 10 or 15 year old like some grad students tend to do these cars essentially often spend a lot of time in the repair shop rather in your parking lot so that's another problem now like i mentioned before the thing about the post doc is you want to go to a top university so if you are graduating from the university of kentucky or the university of mississippi or some foreign university in some developing country one of your aspirations would be maybe to go to and study in harvard or mit or stanford or berkeley and unfortunately these universities are all located in places of very high cost so that's going to certainly set you back so in all these cases i would recommend that try to find universities which are in cities or towns which are less expensive maybe shoot for university campuses though there is a trend in even university campus towns for prices to go up because a lot of people like to retire in these towns so what happens with that is they find the campus towns to be very nice in terms of cost but then as they buy a lot of homes there the prices of these towns also go up so that's a problem so one of the things which has happened is because of this discrepancy in terms of the salary paid to postdoc and the skills which postdoc have in terms of their capability to do research science scholarship mathematics writing and so on they are easily getting jobs in various companies and one of the things which has happened is that most companies are now amenable to phd's because they face a lot of problems with a huge explosion of data and an increasing mathematization of all fields so because of the increasing proliferation of algorithms and mathematics today it is possible to use various advanced and sophisticated techniques which are often known by phd's in various companies and so on especially in startups so let's think of a field such as machine learning or ai now here whatever is happening in the companies may be ahead of whatever is happening in universities so in fact you may be able to do very cutting edge research if you are working on some new chatbot rather than if you are working in a university trying to create a toy chatbot so again that is something which has been realized by many researchers is that why not go and work on a practical problem in the industry which is at a scale which is much larger than what is being done at the university and maybe you can get paid better for it and so this is not only open to people who are us citizens and green card holders but very frequently if you have a phd degree many companies will be able to sponsor you for various work visas because one of the requirements for a work visa is that the problem you are solving is very recondite in nature very difficult for normal people to solve and so they cannot find anybody for that job so typically if you are a postdoc who has 
four to five journal papers under your belt who can line up a few references then you can always get sponsored for a green card under the EB1 category so that's something to keep in mind now beside the industry being much more open to PhD uh, also many postdocs are now realizing that just hanging around as postdoc for years does not really increase their chances in terms of getting a faculty position so I would say maximum of two to three year postdoc is sufficient for you to improve your resume if that's what you wanted to do and then move on to whatever job you can get so this thing is being realized by many people they are going somewhere and getting a faculty job in some small university some of them are going and joining teaching colleges also and also it's always possible to leave the US and to go to some foreign country so I have seen students or postdocs going to Canada going to Australia going back to wherever they came from so some Chinese postdocs have gone back to China some Indian postdocs have gone back to India and so this is also another thing which happens that as the difference in the income level of different countries compresses people have more options and they can think in terms of global mobility because remember that as far as science is concerned it is completely global and there is nothing like US science European science Asian science and so on so you can move across the world you can market your skills to people who are willing to pay you more for it so this was my basic take on the postdoc exodus it is real and it may actually be profitable for people who want to seek a postdoc in the US because there is a dearth of postdoc candidates and in case you are somebody who was living abroad but was constrained because of the closure of the various consulates because of the pandemic you can now go to these consulates and get your J1 or H1 visas and start applying for postdoc positions in the US. So I hope this video was useful to you and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.